Hi fish folks, and thanks for watching Streets Tanks. It's a beautiful morning in the neighborhood when you can sit in your fish room and drink a cup of coffee. It's my favorite morning activity. <laughs> um, so I had a couple comments on my last video about some of the natural driftwood that I, that I collect. Um, I'm very big on trying to create ecosystems um, within my tanks. Uh, I don't do a lot of um, fake ornaments or fake plants or pirate ships or coliseum de decor. Um, you know, it's just not for me. If you love it, that's awesome. More power to you. And I've seen a lot of really cool tanks that have, you know, the the clam that opens and closes with the air stone and all that stuff. It, you know, I totally get the draw to it, and I think it's cool. It's just not what I do in my tanks. Having that being said, I like to create natural looking scapes. Um, you know, that way the fish feel like they're at home. I look at them and I feel like uh, I'm looking at them in their natural environment. And that's something that I try to create for them. Um, one thing I do is I collect driftwood. Um, and this is what the, uh, the episode is going to be about. is going to be some of the natural materials that I do collect. Um, I used to put uh, a lot of beach rocks in my aquariums that I used to find on the beach. Up here in northern Michigan, we have stones called Petoskey stones. Um, they're a coral, um, fossilized coral from years and years ago. Um, and the problem with that is, is it was actually messing with my pH. Um, the Petoskey stones are actually, um, they have um, limestone in them which actually will affect your pH. It'll make it go much, much higher because it's uh, a, it has a, uh, a base, um, a basic makeup, we'll say. I don't know. Um, but yeah, it'll drive that pH higher. Um, so, you know, you try to keep away from those beach rocks. And for the longest time, I couldn't figure out what was going on. It was those Petoskey stones. So, I don't use Petoskey stones anymore as substrate. The substrate is in my tanks are the, is the one thing that I do purchase. Um, you know, I have a tank that uses uh, fluorite, which I really like. I have a tank that's using Eco Complete, which the jury's still out on. It's a new tank. Um, we'll see how it does. Um, I also use dirted tanks. I love dirted tanks. They obviously have their uh, pros and cons, but. Uh, the dirted tanks, they grow like crazy, but anytime you want to move anything, you better be ready for a little bit of a project. Um, so yeah, those are the different kinds of substrates that I use. Um, like I said, I don't use natural rocks anymore, unless you can completely guarantee that that rock is not going to release any, um, any chemicals into your tank that's going to make that pH be adjusted. Now, if you're keeping a fish like uh, you know, some cichlids that need a higher pH, um, or live bears, they like a high pH. Um, you know, it might not be a horrible thing to throw a couple of Petoskey stones in there to get your water a little bit higher. You know, anytime that you can adjust your pH for your fish with something that is going to not be chemicals, like uh, putting pH up or down in your water, horrible idea. It's going to be unstable, and the swing of the pH is far more dangerous to your fish than the uh, just the stable um, pH, lower pH that they're not used to being in. So, um, yeah, you, you can put Petoskey stones in if you're going for that higher pH. I'm not, so I don't use them in my tanks. Um, now, on the opposite hand, um, driftwood tends to lower your pH. You know, typically they have a little bit of acidity to them, and they will, um, they will make that pH go down a little bit, which is something that I can use. My white water comes out of my tap a little bit high, um, so my driftwood tends to help me out a little bit. Now... Back to the process of the driftwood, I got off on a little tangent there. Turkey baster. I take all the pieces of driftwood that I can get that can fit in there, throw it in there, pop the top on there, and just boil it and boil it and boil it. You know, most likely there's nothing in it straight out of the water that's going to um, hurt your fish, most likely. But I just like to be super careful. I got a lot of time invested into my tanks. I've got a lot of money invested into my tanks. And I don't want to um, do anything that's going to put them or compromise them or put them in danger at all. So I boil it. Now one thing to keep in mind is, is that if you're going to boil your driftwood, it is going to basically ruin that, that uh, whatever you boil it in. 
So if you're going to boil it inside, that's fine. But you better boil it in a big old pot or pan or Dutch oven or whatever you want to do that fits your, your driftwood. Um, you better do it in something that you don't care if it gets completely resined up. Um, the, the, the driftwood that I use most readily available around my area is the um, is pine. So it does have a uh, pine sap in it still, even though it's been under the water for hundreds of years. Um, and when you boil it, that comes out. Um, you know, that's a good thing. You know, you don't want to have too much of that pine sap leaking into your tank because it is super acidic. So, you know, I definitely don't mind having it come out. That's part of the goal of boiling it, um, as well as killing all the microbacteria in there. Um, another thing that I do is, is I will let it completely dry out in the sun before I even start to boil it. So, you know, that seems counterproductive. Oh, you're going to let your wood completely unwaterlog itself? and then you're going to have to boil it and re-waterlog it? Yes, there's a part of this process that requires a little bit of patience. Um, even though you do boil it, it's probably not gonna be waterlogged, it helps. Boiling your, um, your driftwood will help it waterlog quicker, and if you boil it for long enough, it will waterlog it, um, but I mean, you're talking a day straight of boiling it before it's going to be waterlogged within your boiling process. Typically what I do is I will boil it, I will clean it, and I will take it out into my garage and I will um, get a big old five gallon bucket of water, fill it up to the top, take my driftwood, put it in, and then put a cinder block on top. Just holding it underneath the water, give it a week, go back, and it'll be waterlogged. Um, you know. If you're not patient, this hobby is not for you because fish take time to grow, plants take time to grow, and, and driftwood takes time to waterlog. So, you know, it's one of those things, you got to be patient with it, but at the same time, you're saving 25, 35, 45, 50 bucks on a piece of driftwood, so it's worth the wait. Um, and also, you have that sense of accomplishment that you went out and found it yourself. You know, you didn't go to the store and buy it, this is something that you gathered. And, you know, I think it's pretty cool. So I'm going to show you a couple different pieces of my driftwood. And um, I'm also going to show you a piece of driftwood that I made for my uh, featherfin catfish. Um, he loves hanging out upside down up at the top of the tank. And I thought I'd give him something to hang up upside around. So uh, I'll show you how I did that as well. Um, and it's not going to be a complete tutorial, but I will show you some, some photos of uh, how I did it. So here's what we got. So here's a little piece of driftwood that I have in my um, Tetra tank. They're happy guys this morning, colored up nicely. Um, this tank's a little dirty, I gotta clean it. But hey, you know, it's the way it is. My snail is being lazy, I need to stop feeding it so many algae tabs and that way it might start working on all the leftover stuff. But uh, yeah, I mean, this is a unique piece of uh, driftwood. I mean, I love the the offshoot here and the big nodule and I love connecting all my nubiuses to driftwood some people do it to rocks sometimes people try to bury it and that is not recommended you know you need that rhizome above the gravel um, but no so that's a piece of driftwood that I collected um, let's see over here um, here's two more um, if you look at this piece and you know the fish they really keep it clean and nice um, here's another piece of driftwood that I found, and that one really doesn't have a purpose right now. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do. I'm basically just keeping it wet for my uh, for my tanks. Um, now these branches, wasn't able to put those into a, a uh, turkey baster to boil them, so those were a little bit of a different situation. I actually um, had a bunch of boiling water going, and then I would um, pour it out on them slowly and scrub them as I went. So it didn't get the hard boil that the rest of the driftwood did, but uh, it did get a good hard scrub with boiling water. Um, so, I mean, it did a good job and everything was fine. Those did take a while to waterlog though. I would say almost a month. Um, here's some more. I got my featherfin catfish in this one. He loves this piece of driftwood, and it's just a piece that I found. You know, th there's lots of different shapes and sizes. If you snorkel around and look for it, I mean, there's really no no end to what you'll find. Um, another little piece that my uh, my little uh, uh, bristle nose plethos just love, and then another little stick that I found around. I'm not even sure that might even come out of the backyard. 
Um, but I tied some Anubias to it. Okay, now this is my floating piece. So what I've done, I'm not sure if you can see this, but in the top there, I drilled a bunch of holes. And in all the holes, I have stuffed um, styrofoam. I didn't go all the way through so you can see it from the bottom or through the front. And then I also put a big chunk of styrofoam nailed up into the front there. So that's up at the top of the tank. And you can't see it because I've got my uh, do-it-yourself grow light up on top there. But uh, so it's suspended. And uh, I have it connected to the side with a little piece of uh, fishing wire so it doesn't drift all over the tank. It stays right there. And oh look, there's another pleco that likes to hang out on the bottom of there. You know, one thing I've noticed is, is that your plecos will love it and then you get to enjoy them more because they hang out up on side of there. They feel safe and they're out in the open. Um, same thing with him. You know, you give him a hiding spot strategically placed and you don't have to never see your fish. You know, it's those tanks that you don't have things like this in and uh, they can't have a place to hide and uh, then you never see them because they're hiding underneath of a rock in the back of your tank. Well, why not give them a hiding spot that's easy where you can see them still. They feel secure and you can still enjoy the fish. So, I mean, I think design of tank is super important so that you can see your fish, you know? So many people buy fish and they never see them again. So, make your tank. Now, I'm not saying don't give them hiding places so that they are always in view. I mean, that's just not the way that fish keeping is. But, you can make your tank in a way that, you know, you, you can actually have them visible at all times and have them be comfortable as well. Um, a couple more pieces of driftwood. Okay, disclaimer, this piece of driftwood, I did purchase that piece of driftwood. Uh, they got me downstate, and uh, I did come home with that piece. It was just too cool for me to leave, and I needed it for a tank, so I, uh, I did purchase that piece of driftwood. Um, but not this one back here. That one I found. Um, and this tank's still waking up. I've had a little bit of an algae problem in there, so I'm cranking down the lights. I only run half the lights. And then these other two lights only come on for six hours a day. Um, down here, um, that's another piece of driftwood that I found that has some Anubias on it. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, it's, uh, it's a very gratifying thing going out and collecting your own supplies for your tank. It's just important to make sure that they're clean and that you're not going to do anything to hurt your fish. Well, thanks again for watching this episode. I hope it wasn't too shaky. Like, like I said, I'm just starting out with this YouTube channel, so um, I'm probably going to have to upgrade my camera. But until then, you're going to have to bear with me while I'm using my phone. Um, any questions, please leave it in the comments. Um, and I'd be happy to talk about what uh, you had questions about. Um, now, look for a video I'm working on right now about how I hatch my brine shrimp. Uh, I should have that up probably tomorrow. Uh, but yeah, it'll be an interesting video. And I just talk about how I do my brine shrimp. Tons of videos out there. Tons of different ways to do it. I have my way and I'm going to show it with you guys. Thanks a bunch and please subscribe.